So today's video, remote controls. And remote controls are awesome. We all have them. They come like this, or they come like this, or they even come like hardwired like this. I can switch the light from here rather than having to go up here and switch the light up here. So remote controls can be wireless or they can be wired. And there's basic remote controls that do like, like one task on off. And there's other remote controls that can do various tasks. So let's look into this a little bit, how this translates to welding today. All right, we're over here in Jeremy's shop and um, I found this Pro Pulse here. And the interesting part is, this looks like there's a TIG remote taped to the gun. And um, it goes into this receptacle here. And there's a little R flashing for remote control. So apparently, you can use the slider here to adjust your synergic settings. So while you're welding aluminum, so you can make your own hot start, you can make your own crater fill, totally independent of any settings. And I thought this was pretty cool, so I need to try this out now. So you set your maximum up here, and then you can adjust it up and down from there. So you don't set it any hotter than what you want to have it for the hottest setting ever. And then you can go up and down from there. So as the pitch gets lower, that means that the weld settings become lower. You can use this to fill big gaps on poor fit up or to fill a crater at the end. The higher the pitch is, that means the faster you're feeding the wire, that means the hotter everything is. You can use that for hot start. Man, it works pretty perfect. Fills the crater, everything. All right, here we're gonna go one more time, give it a run for its money on really thick material, cold material too. Running it wide open for a lot of hot start and then tapering down a little bit and filling the crater really nice at the end. All right, now let's take a look at it, how that weld looks. And um, from what I remember, it looks pretty good. Hardly any soot, a little bit gun angle there. No cold start. The crater is nice and filled, no cracks from there. A little bit wide of a weld. Um, I was a little bit overdoing it. Of course, the idea is not new. See here, you see me welding with a spool gun. And on my left hand, there's a little box from Lincoln Electric that plugs right into my engine drive that I can adjust. Stick welders used this for like decades. They used to adjust the amperage on a stick, and I use it to adjust the voltage on the spool gun. Although you can adjust the wire on the bottom of the spool gun, but especially welding aluminum, it's more about how fluid the puddle is and how long your arc is when you weld, and therefore you need to adjust the voltage more so than the wire speed in order, in order to make it hotter or cooler. So here what I'm doing is, as the material heats up, I'm taking a little bit voltage out as I'm welding, and it works real good. Now, of course, I can use that box from Lincoln and plug this in, but you always have to reach with a second hand, or you can do something where you use a slider and tape it right to your MIG gun, especially if your settings are synergic, more like this. All right, so here's your six pin plug-in. And when you start the engine drive,
So on the Lincoln here, it is a little bit different. No matter where you set your max output, it's not really setting your max output. Your remote takes over and you always have a full minimum to full maximum on the remote. You don't have the options like you have on the HTP where you set your max and then you can only go from zero to the max, whatever you've set. But same concept, it's a remote control. So now you're wondering, of course, what could you do if you had a Synergic machine where you can adjust your wire speed and your voltage all at the same time with a remote control. So now let Jeremy show you what you can do if you have that kind of feature. So after Jeremy welded the front and the back, which was a pretty tight fit, but on the top where it was bent so much, there is a gap about a half inch wide on material that is barely eighth inch thick. And as you can see here, he can fill this in one shot without ever breaking the arc, just lowering the parameters and filling this in. And once it's all filled in, he can dial it up, run a really nice and hot cover pass over it, and it's turning out mint. Now if you ever wondered what the difference is between a full Synergic Pulse MIG machine and just a spool gun, with a spool gun you can absolutely not do this. The spool gun, because aluminum is a spray arc transfer and spray arc is hot, the thinnest you can weld is 8th inch. If you're really good you can weld 100 thousandths and maybe some people that have a real steady hand can go a little bit less. You can never bridge a half inch gap without breaking an arc just putting it in because it would be way too hot. Now of course here Jeremy is like deviating a little bit of the perfect position instead of like perpendicular or pushing the arc he's just slightly pulling it so when it's done you can kind of see a little bit of shadow of black it's not too bad it wipes right off ideally you'll be pushing it he he pulled it to fill it like old MIG habits die hard that's the muscle memory it's playing a trick on him here but it turns out really nice, you'll see when it's done, just wire brush it and run a nice hot cover pass over it. Jeremy, did you ever weld a three-quarter inch wide gap up with aluminum MIG? I can't say that I ever have. I even tried to attempt it, much less do it. So, and of course, if you thought that only works with MIG, of course it works with stick, too. Here we got a remote amperage control right there. See that little yellow knob? That's the handle where you can adjust your amperage on the handle. Same thing, it works for stick. I can do on aluminum here a hot start with a stick, and I can see there I'm not really having enough amperage to get this going, but I can do a hot start on the stick. And as it heats up, I'll move my thumb over and reduce the amperage a little bit, and I'm able to weld this 80,000 stick, two millimeters aluminum with an eighth inch 3.2 millimeter stick rod which is rated by the way 80 to 120 amps operating range and it's really designed to weld material from like at least 8 inch thick to maybe quarter inch in a single pass or a thicker multiple pass and the end result doesn't even look half bad now of course this is on the on the lower end of what's possible but it is possible So we're welding about 80,000 stick material here and we're using this InverArc TLP and we have a sliding amperage controller. We set our max at the machine and then we control it down 
you start at about 70 amps then drop it down to like 64 62 to weld this 